I'll try not to make it boring, but if I manage to slip into Texan or Redneck and you don't understand, <laughs> Dr. Matthews will translate for us. <laughs> Donkeys. You walk into any bar in the United States of America, take off your hat, and say we're passing the hat for dogs and cats. People are going to get, they might not give to you, but they're going to understand the, the problem. Same with horses, same with whales, but not so much with donkeys. You, you go in that same bar and you pass the hat for donkeys, they're going to laugh at you. I've been fundraising for donkeys for 16 years. That's not an exaggeration. I get laughed at all the time. And when they get done laughing, when they see my clenched fists and my red head and I have this, this mild manner appearance, I understand, but sometimes I do have a bad temper. So when they realize that maybe they've, they've crossed the line, everybody comes up with the same question, and that is, why do donkeys need rescuing? And it is a valid question. And donkey rescue in the United States doesn't get a lot of mainstream media news. A lot of that reason is because my organization takes in between 700 and 1,000 every year. So if we weren't around, there would be this big void out there and you would hear more about it. So we're, I guess we're too good at what we do. Um, since we're kind of being casual, if y'all have any questions, feel free to, to just jump in, all right? So, oh, holy cow. <laughs> I guess it is. Oh, a little wheelie thing. All right, all right. So, first thing we see a lot of when we're dealing in individual cases is hoof neglect. And it's also something that the general public can identify without any education. They can't necessarily tell you that a donkey is too thin or too fat or anything, but anybody can see regardless that there's a problem here. Now, this kind of neglect takes time. And so you kind of have to think about what kind of person would allow this to happen. In Texas, we pay $25 per hoof trim. If you don't have $25, you should not have an animal of any kind. But we see this fairly common, all different shapes and sizes. A lot of it has to do with environment, where, where, what kind of pen they're kept in. Um, you can tell this, you know, obviously well fed. I would say of the hoof cases that we deal with, 60% we can restore. 30% we can make comfortable to live out their lives on our ranch, and 10% we have to put down because it's, it's gone on too long. There's so much damage in the leg itself that there's just nothing we can do. And we've done everything from build, corrective shoes, just all sorts of stuff. But how you could live with yourself doing this kind of stuff is just beyond the pill. Now, we also see stuff like this. This was obviously outside trauma that healed this way. Again, Donkeys in most parts of the country have zero financial value. If you're from Texas and you have an animal with zero financial value, you're not going to make an investment in that animal because you won't get that investment back. That's why donkeys are not castrated in Texas because it's going to cost you from 120 to 200 bucks depending on the part of the state. Well, that, that, that gelding that you now created isn't worth 200 bucks, and so they don't get castrated. Then we see a lot of stuff like this. Uh, a lot of this is, you know, inbreeding problems that we see like that. And our job is to assess these animals. We should probably talk about up front. We don't have $10,000 donkeys. I manage over 3,000 donkeys in the United States. Not one of them like, can I spend $10,000 on to restore it to perfect health? That's, that's not my business. But there's a lot of things that we can do to, to, to make these animals. And a lot of times people will step forward and help sponsor an individual animal. Uh, this is a, a, a case. I was this two days before past Christmas. This is in Alabama. By the, before we got there, three of them had already died. And they were all, you can, they were just threadbare. And there was nursing moms, all sorts of stuff. And sometimes we get there a little too late. Another problem, obesity. Donkeys are very prone to obesity. You see this a lot where they're left to graze out and left to their own devices. Being a desert animal, they're programmed to browse all day long, just creep around the desert and browse. So when they creep around and browse in a rich pasture, they get fat as a tick. And then this is a huge problem, believe it or not, because they're cute, and they're cuddly. 
And his name is Baby Joey, and he just adores me, and he keeps trying to jump in the trailer every time I'm there. But the problem with Baby Joey is he turns into this. This particular rescue involved 85 whole jacks, 77 Jeanettes, and 80% of the Jeanettes are pregnant. So this rescue will top out at over 250 donkeys by the time we're done. This was six or seven breeding pair released on 300 acres and never looked at again. Everyone, except for baby Joey, is wild as a March hare. And we just found out last week that half of those males are either half or completely blind. And we have not found that in the Jeanette. So since we, we just discovered it, now we're looking at somebody to come out and tell us what the heck's going on. But over, overbreeding is a huge problem, not just in Texas, but all across the country. If they're, if they're left unchecked, they, they go bananas. This is Snoopy. I caught Snoopy in uh, northwest Nevada, about as high up in the stage you can get on the Sheldon Refuge. And he was one of over 500 donkeys, but we have several wild burrow pro uh, programs. So that's another issue that we, we deal with is unchecked breeding in wild burrows. Now I'm going to throw around terms. You're going to hear me say burrow and you're going to hear me say donkey. It's the same animal. I don't know if anybody covered this. We say a, a domestic donkey versus a wild burrow. Okay, so you could technically have a female wild burrow brought onto the ranch, give birth to a domestic donkey, okay? There's no magic there. That's just how we, we differentiate because in our program, we, we treat them differently as far as safety and different things like that. This is a fairly normal looking leg with a little bit of an overgrown hoof. Oh, see, doggone it. And this isn't. You can see the coffin bones missing. This is Tink. And Tink had a very long, overgrown, hooked front hoof. And he got in a fight with a much bigger donkey. He's just a little bit bigger than a mini. But he got in a fight with a big jack that had a halter on him. And Tink got that hook, caught in that halter, and ripped it off. Coronary band down, took the coffin bone. Lived like that for at least two months before we were notified and, and could rescue him. And this is the guy, this is us making a, uh, a, case, uh, a, a casting so that we could get him a prosthetic. And I think later on I got a picture of him in his actual prosthetic. And then this is Kenny. Again, we're, right now we're just talking about why donkeys need to be rescued. This is not a joke. Him having a halter on and a pin, the caution tape, is not a joke. Kenny was raised in somebody's kitchen, front room because they thought his mom was being mean to him because she would take her leg and knock him aside. So they were being mean. So they took him away and they brought him in the house and they bottle fed him. And when he was two years old, they put him out in the pasture. And this 90-year-old man and his great-grandson went out to the pasture to pet the friendly donkey because everybody just loved Kenny. And Kenny attacked him and put him in the hospital. And the reason was because Kenny didn't know he was a donkey. So he had no respect, no fear, of natural separation between humans and donkeys, and he was, he was dangerous. The way I got Kenny in that pen is I took a broom handle, I broke it in half, and when he lunged at me to bite me, I stuck it in his mouth, and I wrapped rope around it so that he couldn't see. I, I took him home with his mouth open like an alligator. And it took us every bit of nine months and a whole bunch of the wild jacks whipping hell out of him to teach him that he was a donkey and there is a hierarchy. We found him a great home. He's a great donkey now, but th this is very common, they, and they can be dangerous. Uh, Tex, he didn't touch his babies. You know, everybody talks about imprinting. He wouldn't touch, he bred big donkeys, and he wouldn't touch them because he wanted that natural separation between human and donkey, and it makes a lot of sense. And then this, uh, there's a lot of this. I don't know if you all have that up here. Donkey roping. It's cheaper to kill a donkey than it is a, a calf. Uh, it is. Um, break, a, break a leg, uh, break a neck, it doesn't matter. And so it's cruel. Donkeys aren't made to be roped that way. And it's a big sport, and they have a big time. But we, we do what we can to stop that. And then this. Now, this isn't necessarily cruel. They're not hurting the donkeys. The basketball outfits that I've investigated, they actually treated the donkeys very well. But what this does is it reinforces all the negative stereotypes about donkeys. And it makes our job that much harder. 
When Bugs Bunny did something stupid, he turned into a donkey. When Pinocchio was overindulgent, again, a donkey. These are ingrained into our society. So you go out to the local basketball and you see the donkeys. And actually what those donkeys are doing nine times out of 10 is they're trying to make sure those people are safe. That's why they won't move. They want the people to be safe. They don't want to hurt things. And so, because if they wanted to get away, if they wanted to retaliate, it wouldn't be a problem. But this just reinforces that and makes my job all the more difficult. Any questions on why we, any of the problems that we face? We got all the all time in the world, so we can just, so you can just make things up if you want. <laughs> now, you know, if I say y'all, I could be talking to an individual or just a portion of you, right? <laughs> if it's all y'all, then that means all of you, and then if it's all y'alls, it's plural possessive, right? So I just, 